Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Matters of the Heart, brought to you by Pentucket Medical Cardiology, as well as Haverhill Community Television. My name is Dr. Sonny Srivastava, and I'm here with one of my colleagues, Dr. Seth Bilizarian, uh, to talk to you about another cardiovascular topic. And today, I think we're going to talk about a uh, topic that's been getting a fair amount of press lately. It's about a, a certain type of blood test called CRP. And I'll start by just handing it right over to Dr. Bill Azari and ask, what is CRP? Great. Well, thank you. Yeah, so it, there's been a lot of press, as you mentioned, and uh, people have been talking about this for a number of years. But particularly in the, the, the latter part of 2008, there's been a lot of enthusiasm about it as a potential way to evaluate patients for uh, cardiovascular <clears throat> risk. And as you said, uh, what is it? It stands for C-reactive protein. So CRP stands for C-reactive proteins, different than CPR, which we talked about in another show, which is when we help people when they have a heart attack or, or their heart stops. But CRP or C-reactive protein is a protein that uh, is something that may be important for helping evaluate people's risks. If I could go to the first graphic, I'll just go through a couple of important pieces of information about C-reactive protein. So what is C-reactive protein or CRP? It's a critical component of um, uh, the immune system. So when our body responds to an infection or trauma, our body makes this protein. We all have it. And it's just been recently identified as something that may be important to identify heart disease or vascular problems. Everyone makes C-reactive protein, but the amount we make, it depends on two things, genetics and lifestyle. And individuals who smoke or have high blood pressure or are overweight or fail to exercise all have higher levels of CRP, whereas young athletic people like you, Dr. Sonny, uh, have lower levels of CRP. But half of the CRP level is determined by inheritance or genetics. So even if you are young and healthy and don't smoke, you can still have a high CRP. And inflammation may start and promote the placking process, which is really part of the whole vascular problem that we're concerned about. So I, I, one question I often get asked, and I'll just ask it so we can talk about it, is um, is CRP the same thing as cholesterol, or does this make my cholesterol unimportant, or what's... what's no, they're completely yeah. different. It's a good question to ask. Cholesterol is an important building block of all cells, and we now acknowledge and recognize that cholesterol is an important risk factor because too much of it can be deposited in the wall of the artery, that cholesterol placking. But what's the initial thoughts are about C-reactive protein is, is that it's part of the inflammatory process that might actually make cholesterol enter the wall of the artery. So they're sort of separately important. You can have a high cholesterol and a low CRP. You can have a high CRP and a low cholesterol. Both can be high or both can be low. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But mm -hmm. yes, in fact, uh, it is not correlated with high cholesterol in terms of that. They're separate. And we think they're sort of separate indicators. So that, that's an, a good question. Let me just go back to one of the first slides just to review um, some important things about CRP. So the first slide about C CRP, if I could go to it, it says CRP equals C-reactive protein. It's actually our first slide. If we could show that graphic, that would be great, and we can review together what, what some important information that I want to sort of help evaluate things. So if we go to the next slide, thank you, this one. So C-reactive protein is important, and let me just put that in perspective. It answers a little bit of the, what Dr. Srivastava's question was a second ago. One, in the United States, there are 1.5 million heart attacks and about 600,000 strokes every year in the United States. But only half of those people have a high cholesterol. Half of those people have what we consider a normal cholesterol. So something else is going on. So yes, cholesterol is important, but people are having heart attacks from other reasons. Now, of course, some of it could be some of those people are smokers, so that could be a risk factor without cholesterol or high blood pressure. But C-reactive protein may be a link to help us find more people who are at risk other than just cholesterol. So C-reactive protein is just a blood test. You have it drawn like any of this. You don't even have to be fasting like we have to be for cholesterol. But the other thing I do want to mention just now, maybe we'll come back to it at the end, is that not only is C-reactive protein or CRP an important predictor for vascular events like heart attack and stroke, but it's also an important predictor for diabetes. So if you have a high CRP, you're at higher risk for diabetes as well as heart attack and stroke. So in essence, the, 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 to boil it down is that there's more to it than just cholesterol. There's something else going on. Right. Likely inflammation and CRP is a blood test that's a marker of inflammation. Yes, well, let me so, just take an aside on that point you just made about inflammation. There is a fair amount of research that's gone on that says that when we have a heart attack, our artery is actually inflamed. There's a very interesting study that actually 
We know, for instance, if you have a, a finger that's inflamed, you got an infection, a splinter that got inflamed, it becomes reddened, becomes swollen, and it becomes warm. The infection actually causes warmth. And there's actually been data that has looked at the arteries of the heart. If you have a heart attack in, say, the front artery of your heart, and you compare it to the back artery of the heart, it actually increases as much as one degree of temperature the front artery of the heart that's having the heart attack. So there is actually an inflammatory process that's going on. What we're talking about here is very, very, very tiny levels of, of inflammation that can be picked up with this very sensitive test called the high sensitivity CRP. So yes, it is an inflammatory process. We think it may be going on even at low levels. We don't even know. Inside of our own blood vessel system, we may be having this tiny bit of inflammation that causes a, a, a beginning of the placking process, but it can also be part of the heart attack process. So to get back to this blood test then, how do we use this? Who are you checking this blood test on? Uh, is it for everybody? Um, maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Well, I think it's a great question to ask yeah. because there's so many opinions because there ha we haven't really come about a best way to, tr to, to use this test. But it's a good question that you ask and let's talk about it and I'd love to hear your opinion about it as well. But um, there isn't a specific guidelines. You know, when, there are, when a lot of information exists and it's pretty clear how we should treat people, we often come up with a guideline. When I say we, the cardiology societies come up with a guideline. So we have two major societies, the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association, and they will often come up with a consensus guideline. <coughs> they've done that for blood pressure, they've done that for heart attack treatment, they've done that for cholesterol, but there isn't yet one for the CRP. So we have to sort of use our own judgment about the data and how best to treat people. But I use it for people who are at what's called intermediate risk. So in someone who has a high cholesterol, I know that they need to be treated with cholesterol medicine, so I don't need the CRP. In someone who's at very low risk, so is not a smoker, does not have family history, is not overweight, their cholesterol is not elevated, I don't think I need a CRP in those people. Mm -hmm. But in people who are in in-between range, who maybe have one risk factor, maybe family history, but they otherwise don't have any risk factors, or they have a borderline cholesterol, Often we use it in women because women are at lower risk than men, but they're not at zero risk. In those people, we can really be very good about help defining risk. And if someone has a high CRP but is not at other risk, then I think it would push us more to be more aggressive with cholesterol, blood pressure, mm -hmm. other kinds of treatments. If they're at intermediate risk and they have a low CRP, then we would feel more comfortable being continuing recommendations for exercise and diet and not using medications. We keep saying low and high. Let me just mention yeah, that, that as well. That is my next question. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of different cut points, but most people would agree that a cut point of less than one is low risk. Over three is high risk. Some people use a level of two as high risk, but clearly less than one is low risk. One to three usually intermediate risk, and over three is high risk. Uh, well, I think, you know, you asked what I thought about it, and I think about it in somewhat of a similar fashion as you do, and I think of it as a means of uh, a useful test for primary prevention. So you're trying to identify uh, high risk in an individual who otherwise you would think is low risk otherwise. And so, um, so I think it is a very exciting test. And there are other tests similar to this. I want to get your opinion 